down because they know the type of game that they are playing. You know, we have instances of this nature. So you need to have that at the back of your mind. Uh, one, our brother mentioned land commission. Yes, land commission is there. But let me state that land commission doesn't own land. There you go. Land commission doesn't own land because the government itself doesn't own land. What government does is that in some instances, government goes to some traditional areas and negotiate for land for state use. And the clause is that if the state is no more interested in developing that land for the original purpose that it was intended, for which it you know, acquired that land from the traditional owners or the original owners, it must revert the land back to the original owners. But at times, you know, human institutions, people um, explore or play games with even the rules to test them to see how effective they are. So, government at times sell some of these lands that it originally acquired from the local people to some other private individuals who wanted to you know, have those parcels of land, especially where they find themselves in prime areas. And the traditional authorities do not take kindly to that because government has reneged on or has broken terms of the agreement at the time of purchase. So these, some of these issues end up in court. Right. So you need to be very careful where you want to get this. And we have state institutions that will guide you even on the African-American front, we have the African-American forum, we have the association over there that can guide you to not as much as practicable, avoid dealing with an individual that you are not very sure of. And one thing we had a program with some of your colleagues, they came with Professor Small, James okay. Small. Yeah, and um, the investment the Ghana Investment Board, one thing that they made mention of and emphasize is that before you go into any such transactions, ensure that you have a strong, a powerful legal counsel, a lawyer to guide you through the process. And the state institutions are also there to help you on that particular journey. I think that's what I can say for now. Uh, yes, and before you continue, uh, to make something clear, uh, you said uh, government doesn't own land. So um, what is what is vested land? Isn't vested land land that's been turned over to government or government acquired? Yes, uh, okay, okay. Government, uh, and in the process, we have what we call a government, a uh, land banks by the state. <coughs> Okay, land banks uh, for the state for national development uh, pro programs. That is where government, but the government itself does not own the land, like I'm saying. Ghana as a state was brought forth as a, 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 a we had traditional states, traditional, you know communities that form the states coming together now to merging them together to form the country that we have as Ghana. It's only when law passed, you know, introduced by the British government as part of the process of owning uh, the country that they invested the mineral resources of the country in the hands of the government. But the land itself belong to the people. 
accent. So yeah. example, if I go to the Lands Commission and I say all of this land right here is vested and I purchase it from the Lands Commission, do I now still have to do something with the chief in that area? Now, the Land Commission cannot just get up and sell a parcel of land over here to you. If it's not vested, if wealth is vested, isn't that the... If it's vested in the state, if the state, no, it not, I would, you, I'm very careful in the, the word vested. <laughs> Because who invested it in the uh, in the states? The state would rather go negotiate with the local people, the chiefs, and acquire that land. So it's not actually vested. The state acquired it. That is the land that the the uh, land commission has to control on. Because the, the state uses the land is the land commission that takes control over the state land. However, the land commission has records of all the traditional areas and knows the rightful owners of every parcel of land. So to be on the safe side, if you want to buy a parcel of land, you want to know, you go to the right source, you can go, go to the land commission, yeah, yeah. Go to the land commission and then they will tell you the rightful owners of that particular land. So now this is the, the major question now. So you would you pay? So you pay the lands commission in the best for case, their service, and then um, the the lands commission turn around and pay the chief also. No, the land commission directs you, gives you information who owns that particular land, and when you go, the land commission will be able to tell you that Mr. A is the owner of that land. But on this date, Mr. A sold this particular area of that land to Mr. B. So it also saves you from going to Mr. A and buying the same parcel of land which Mr. B had already um, bought from that very Mr. A. I hope you are getting the picture right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> The situation was explained different from me, uh, different to me. It was explained to me that you um, go to the Lands Commission and you uh, you the purchase money. the uh, vested land, and then the Lands Commission. Uh, what was explained to me is that uh, by this is by our, our attorney, our, our corporate attorney. You uh, you go to the Lands Commission and uh, you pay them for the portion of land that's out. <laughs> That you know that you ag agreed on, and then they will take payment for the land and turn around and also pay the chief. And with paying for the land, you'll get your registration and things like that. Now, this is another part where maybe Muhammad can also help us with. Yeah, yeah. 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 What is happening here? Yeah. Like I said, the land commission knows all the land. You know, they've documented all the lands. So, like I said they can tell you who owns a particular parcel of land. So through them, but they cannot sell the land to you even without recourse to the original owners of the land. Help me break this down. Uh, so example, so if I, uh, so if I, I, would, I would get the attorney to, um, to, to, to sign an agreement with the chief. Sorry, I was Sorry. Yeah. So in this situation, say example, I go get the I get attorney, and then I find out that this chief is who owned this land. So we 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 fill out the paper that just like we signed that contract with the chief, right? Yeah. And then now we pay the chief, but then we still have to go to the lands commission to register. Register the, paper, the land. Register the land. Yes. So the land commission, based on their knowledge of one, the owner, the rightful owner of the land and you haven't bought it from the owner of the land and the owner of the original or the truthful owner of the land giving you the documents and relinquishing his right over that land based on all those information the land commission will now register that land in your name that's yeah, perfect uh, Mohammed, yeah. now is that is that how the process works for your land because uh, we have different situation land yes yes my land uh, for me my land is like um, we have a paramount chief and a soft chief right so my land like this the owners of the land is uh, i bought it from there let's say the paramount chief 
So I need I need known to go to uh, any sub chief on the land. So we we got the land and then it was first of all I made a search and I, I, I had a land commission and I saw I found out the owners of the land. So I went through a friend and they showed me the right chief. Then I went there and they said, oh, we are the, the owners of this land. So I started negotiating and then make sure about it. But the vested land is, if you went and made a search and they said, this is vested land, and the first of all, the land commission knows the rightful owner. But before then, you have to, you know, talk to the, the land commission and see whether you can buy it. If there is a way, there is go ahead of buying it, they will, they will tell you. Although the land has invested in us as a government, as a uh, land commission, but you cannot, we cannot sell it. But there are vested land that are selling. No, go never. straight, straight, yeah, go. There are vested land that are selling. That, first of all, the chief will tell you, the chief have to be honest and sincere with you. Oh, this is vested land. It's my land. Uh, I've invested into the uh, uh, government, that is land commission. But before, you know, uh, the land commission sell it to you, I will be the f uh, person to sign to you. But the money has to go to the land commission and then they will re uh, reverse it to me. But sometimes, if the land is like, a, uh, let's say the paramount chief as a soft chief, and you are the soft chief, you wouldn't like to the money to go to the, uh, the, the, chief, the, right? the, the paramount chief. So you will sell the land on your own. <laughs> And then later on, when it's by, there's a problem, you know, you 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 deal with that. And sometimes, you know, that is the most difficult thing that you have to. So making a very very due diligence on the on the buying the land is a is a uh, I mean proper thing to do. So, so, so basically, you don't ever really want to pay a sub chief. You want to go. You want to pay the paramount chief in that area. Yes, the paramount chief. And the paramount chief will take care of the sub chief. Yeah, the, when the, the money will come to the paramount chief, and then he give he give a, a portion to the sub chief. But sometimes, when the money goes to the paramount chief, the one that comes to the uh, sub chief, you know, is like uh, uh, it's not enough. By then, the originally the sub chief is the owner of the land because we have agreed that we will be under this uh, paramount chief. But this land is belongs to us, you know. So when it's vested, <coughs> it means he has vested into the, the paramount uh, at, at that area, the chief of the paramount of the area. So that's the reason why some of the sub chief they go ahead and sell the uh, vested land. And later on, you know, in, you know, when later on the sub, uh, the power chief got to know, he will be annoyed. He will be annoyed, but it's not like he's coming to take the land back from you. He will be annoyed. No, you know. So sometimes that is they have an issue within uh, within the the, the, uh, the chief facing problem. But you don't have any issue. Of you know, but make sure you get a, 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 a you make a very you know thorough investigation on it, and then when you find out to know that this is how it goes, even you can even some people can pay the sub chief and go and pay the paramount chief to avoid you know any problem problem. That's a lot of people to be yeah, paying. Yes, yes. yes, it is. Yeah. Hey, can you speak on the land? Because even when it's vested, it's still not, you still don't own the land when you buy it about the lease. Yes, 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 yes. When, you know, Ghana itself, we don't, we don't, um, you, you, you don't go land where it, all the land is leased, is leased, 99, is leased 99 years, 99 years, 99 years. 
So after ninety nine years, you know, you have to, you know, the real, the real, you know, lazy and gave to you. So from where we so when you buy the land, when you buy the land, the one who will sign, the chief have to sign the uh, the land for you before it will be registered. When the chief, is the the signatory is not pending on his the, on the document, the document cannot be registered. So these people, this the one who pin his name on the the owner of the land. Who pen his name on the um, on the document before it gets registered? But I uh, I would say from my um, great grandmother up to now, I knew my great grandmother talks about um, uh, land. You know, daddy hold, we hold that he bought and all of that. This land, you know. People have bought it, and the 99 years is yeah, over. That is the first one. Yeah. So after after the 99 years, who does the land revert back to? In, in, uh, after the 99 years, you have to go back to the 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 the, the, the lineage of the um, the chief tenancy or the family will not go. It will be there. You know they inherit the uh, the the property. So after that, you have to go to the family or the chief where the, uh, they, they, they control the land. You have to go there. But I'm saying that since, you know, at my age, I haven't seen any land that have, uh, the, uh, the 99 years have expired and then resell it again. It means now after 99 years, you, 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 become, you have to renew it. You have to renew it. But if you don't go and renew it, even the owners of the, owners of the land will not come and take it. You know, because the generation has, let's say, almost about five, six generations. Even those that are living don't know whether this land belongs to them. If you don't come, you understand what I'm trying to say? You say, uh, like by 99 years, all the elders that signed the land, even they've gone, and even those in their, in their, uh, before them also gone. So, like by three generations gone. So, who, who, you know, where we live, as at now, uh, in Accra, where we live, the land was bought from a particular uh, family that we know, you know. But, you know, generation the years have come. Nobody has come that, oh, you have to renew your, you know, your land. So here, yeah, when you buy a land and you had a 99 years, you have to thank God because you, you own it and you own it until somebody comes. Fine. It is your, when you buy it, it's your generation how to renew it. Renew it. If they don't know how to, if they, if they don't know how to renew it, if they, nobody comes, you still own it. Yes. Let's get, get, get the two questions. This is different from what you're saying. I got to make a comment. Oh. Okay. So our brother, Sias, he said earlier, Sias said earlier about the dom. We can't hear you. No, just talk into the mic. Okay. Yes. Do you hear me? No. no. Just talk loud into the mic. I'm talking. Hello. You have to let it be on your mind. Okay. You hear me now? Yes. Yes. Our brother Pius, he was saying something about um, the African American uh, Association. They have Caribbean American uh, Association also. I wanted to make sure I say that. That's two. And um, I know the African because I've been there. They have meetings um, third Sunday of every month oh, around my yeah. four o'clock. And in the African Forum is there too. So we all go to um, the W.E. Du Bois Center on that same property toward the back is where they are located. That was the first thing that I want to say. The second thing I want to say, all of us that are in sororities and fraternities, they're here. And different ones have um, chapters here. So I know the Sigmas have a chapter here. I know um, the Q's have a chapter here. Uh, I know the AKs are all around and stuff. And um, um, Zeta's got a chapter. So all of us that are in sororities and fraternities, 
Zetas and the Cubans. Can you tie in your point with what you're telling us about all these organizations? Huh? I mean, tie in your point on why oh, no, that's you're... what I'm saying, because we, like I said, we have some people in the bus. You got to hold the mic up to We have people in the bus that are in sororities, you know, because we got two AKAs and I'm one, another sister over there, and then you got a cap with us here, and you have a cute here. So it's good for us in here, that's the point that I'm saying, that, you know, that we're here. Right. So, you know, that's what I want to say. And like I said before, the Caribbean Association has... Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be somehow you tying it into the Lands Commission of Land. No, I said it was something totally different. Okay, since you mentioned it, right. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. My question is, if you are a man, um, can you still lease for 90 years? I thought it was 50 years. Yes, 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 I forget. Now the government, you know, the, the government has brought a law that, you know, uh, we should sell the land to um, the price and, and foreigners uh, as a lease of 50 years. As a lease of 50 years. Lease of 50 years. But for me, my land, you know, uh, I have got from the, the chief uh, 99 years. So, wherever uh, the years has read, maybe if I bought it five years ago, then I'll give it to you, let's say, uh, 94 years. It depends on the years that, you know, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah then, you know, so that is so, how it goes. So that means that portion of land is going to be in your family for 99 Nine years. years, yes. Then you need to So, 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 uh, 99 years, Try to wrap it up I have to, yeah. 99 years, I have to renew with the. Uh, after 90 years, I have to renew with the chief again. If if I'm no more and my children or my great grandchildren knew nothing about it, then that is it. Yeah. If not, it goes back to. No, it's not going back. It's not going back. It, nobody knows, so you still own it. That is what I'm saying. My great grandmother, where we live, we still we still live there. You know, my great grand I don't know her, but you know, he bought the land, and I'm still living there. It's more than 200 years now. You understand? But we still live there. Even those who that uh, the chief or the family that owned the land, we know them. We know them, but they also have passed on, so they don't care about. The land again and all of that. They don't come to say, "Oh, uh, you, your family bought this land from my family, and so you have to come and renew." No, it doesn't happen. Yeah.